almost feel like I'm kind of the same, but the ground shifted beneath me. You know, I didn't like radically change my own positions, but they've started to mean different things. I used to think I was more liberal socially, but I can't say that now because what that means now is you're pro this radical trans agenda and you're pro race essentialism. I'm not pro any of that. It used to mean like, I don't know, just an entirely different field of things. And I used to be more pro national security and sort of the national security apparatus. You know, I'm Gen Xer, experienced 9-11 on a personal level. Mm, things have changed there too. I definitely, the far, farther we get from 9-11, the less we need a lot of those tools. And the more I see them being abused, my feelings about uh, federal law enforcement agencies like the FBI have changed as we've learned more information. So I, I feel like the world has shifted and my opinions of it have changed accordingly. But I remain non-ideological. I'm Dave Rubin, and joining me today is the host of the Megan Kelly Show, Megan Kelly. Megan, I just said your name three times. That's four. <laughs> if I say Megan one more time, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. I realize that's quite an intro. If I say this is the host of the Megan Kelly Show, Megan Kelly, and then I want to say your name to bring you in. Yeah, it's, it's a, lot. a lot of Megans, a lot yeah, of Megans. MK. But I got you. How you doing, sister? It. What's going on? I'm doing great. All is well. I'm, I'm excited. This has been a great news cycle. It always makes me happy. And uh, my kids are in a good place now, so that makes me happy too. All is well. Let's do the kids stuff first. You fled New York City. You're in the suburbs over there, but you still are in the tri-state area, let's say. Yeah. Uh, are you protected enough from the insanity just by leaving Manhattan? I'm, yes, I am. And I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled we did it. You know, we've talked about the awfulness of the New York City private schools before and how hardcore left they went. I mean, hardcore. Asking my boys, and they're all boys' school regularly if they were sure they were still boys. That school no longer refers to boys as boys. They call them your student. Go collect your student. They yeah. don't say son. Um, it, this was one of the more traditional schools in the city. Yeah. That's why we chose yeah. it. Uh, if we wanted far left, we would have gone to Dalton. We chose one that was more traditional, but it went hardcore. At, at the thing about you know race essentialism and in every classroom where white children learn, there's a future killer cop. I mean, they went far left. So we pieced out of there pretty quickly. And we found this school in Connecticut where we did our homework, of course, it's still boys and girls because I have two boys and a girl. And my boys' school in particular has been outstanding. My little guy says the pledge every day. We went to the annual dinner where they, you know, say hello to all the parents just the other day, uh, last week. And the head of school stood up there and said, we are unabashedly pro-American here. Mm. And we do not believe in equity of outcome. We believe in equality of opportunity. And we yeah. don't believe in teaching these boys what to think. We want to teach them how to think. Like, I, Dave, you or I could have written this yeah. as the <laughs> ideal ethos for our school. And so I was, I mean, a single tear was running out. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, our girl, girls' school has been better than where she was. I wouldn't say it's quite as great as the boys, but we're working on it. Do you feel undue pressure when you send your kids to a school? I mean, you're Megyn Kelly, every administrator, teacher, and all the other parents, they're gonna know who you are. They're gonna know that if they overstep on something or if they have an odd policy, there's a good chance you're gonna talk about it. That's gotta be a kind of delicate balance because you also wanna keep your kids private and all that. Well, I don't talk about what schools we're at or even what city we're in because I really have had some very dark security issues in my past as an anchor. Yeah. So yeah. just as a security measure, I don't do that. And so I wouldn't be embarrassing this. It would it would take a massive fall down. Even even when I left the New York City schools, I I haven't named them. I don't talk about them by name. I, I don't I'm not my goal is not to embarrass anybody. Um but it, if they cross the line far enough, I would have to. <laughs> it's definitely, you know, an, an arrow in my quiver. And um, hopefully they won't necessitate it. You know, I I will say, like, if something happens, I, I've become a squeaky wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, there there was a memo that went out by one teacher citing Kendi and anti-racist this. And, I, I mean, immediately I was on the horn, like, what's this? This mm -hmm. is, And the school was already on it. They had already taken care of it. They were wow. two steps ahead of me. So I knew I was in the right place. But um, I can't really worry about that. And I will say, if I speak out publicly, because I, 
for example, my daughter's school, they were looking for a new head of school and I, we went to all the meetings and I listened to every single candidate and what she was saying on, you know, their vision. And I asked all the tough questions about diversity, equity, inclusion, the lovely name that doesn't match up in practice. And I had so many parents come to me after the fact saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, it's like, you know how it is when you're out there, like you're out there with your opinions and so am I. People are grateful because they're still stuck on the other side. They don't feel like they can especially touch those third rails. And so they feel really validated when they hear somebody who's who can do so. I, I can only imagine at like a school board meeting how they're all staring at you like, Megan will do it. We can just, <laughs> we can just kind of sit back here. She'll, she'll take care of it. Do you think your politics have shifted at all in the last couple of years? Like, I think you and I, as much as I can think of anyone in a public sphere, I think we're like pretty darn close on things. And whatever the differences are, it just doesn't matter in terms of being human and friends. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as things have spun out of control over the last couple of years, do you think you've shifted on certain things? Well, I almost feel like I'm kind of the same, but the ground shifted beneath me. You know, I didn't like radically change my own positions, but they've started to mean different things. I used to think I was more liberal socially, but I can't say that now because what that means now is you're pro this radical trans agenda and you're pro race essentialism. I'm not pro any of that. It used to mean like, I don't know, just an entirely different field of things. And I used to be more pro national security and sort of the national security apparatus. You know, I'm Gen Xer, experienced 9-11 on a personal level. Mm, things have changed there too. I definitely, the far farther we get from 9-11, the less we need a lot of those tools and the more I see them being abused. My feelings about uh, federal law enforcement agencies like the FBI have changed as we've learned more information. So I, d I feel like the world has shifted and my opinions of it have changed accordingly, but I remain non-ideological. You know, I'm at heart, I'm a soulless lawyer who wants to be persuaded with facts. And if you come to me with better facts, instead of saying, oh, I, I was wrong, I'll say, hallelujah, I've learned something new. I'm smarter today than I was yesterday. So I'm not ideological. I'm certainly not a knee-jerk Republican or Democrat. Um, I'm still a registered independent and remain open-minded. Does Do you think that can work, the, the independent thing, like in, in sort of real politics? I know it can work for you privately and personally, but like that in terms of just this craziness that we're in, it's either like we're going to usher in more of this woke stuff or maybe we can stop it. But the middle thing is just, well, it get, it's just getting harder to hold in a way. Middle is not the right word. Independent yeah. is different. Independent is just, I think, non-ideological and mm -hmm. open to calling BS on both sides. Uh, but I'll give you an example. I went to a, one of these like events where you show up and you have deep conversations and people pay, buy a ticket to listen. And one of the guys who was there spoke near when I did was Andrew Yang. And I like Andrew Yang a, a lot. I, I don't agree with him on most of his positions, but he's the kind of Democrat I could get behind. Tulsi Gabbard, she's the kind of Democrat I could get behind. In no world do I ever see myself backing somebody like Matt Gates for president. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I could never back somebody like AOC. Marjorie Taylor Greene is not my cup of tea. You know, so I don't know. You know, like if it were Marjorie Taylor Greene versus Andrew Yang, I'd probably go with Andrew Yang. You know, so that's what I mean. Like, yeah, it could work for me. I don't know if it's going to work for the country, <laughs> but for my own personal politics, I'd be fine with that. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about the media instead of nonstop yelling, check out our media playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out the full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.